Uh, my name is Neil Fleckenstein. I'm the uh, Land Use Planning Coordinator for the Tall Timbers Land Conservancy. Well, we recognize that um, conserving land really isn't enough. That's sort of where we try and, and start. You know, we're really trying to, to do a better job of working with the public to kind of make them realize that uh, it's just not about conserving rural landscapes and natural areas, that there are real tangible benefits that uh, urban environments get from these natural areas, things like uh, fresh drinking water, things like fresh air, protection of wildlife habitat, flood control, flood mitigation, things like that. So those things may not be you know, very obvious, but I think we're starting to do a better job now of trying to communicate to the public that there are a lot of tangible benefits to those urban environments from protecting these rural landscapes. While there are only just a, a handful of land conservancies around the country that are doing the kind of work that we do, uh, we kind of recognize that we can really be a model for other areas of the country as well. And I think you're going to start to see uh, more land conservancies around the nation sort of adopt the model that we've got here where you're kind of combining land conservation with, uh, with land use planning with benefits for both the natural environment as well as uh, for the built environment. So helping us do a better job of conserving natural areas but also helping us do a better job of, of planned cities in ways that, uh, that enhance the quality of life in cities and at the same time uh, protect natural areas. And we kind of recognize that water, of course, is one of the biggest resources, the most important resources that we have to protect. So a lot of the efforts that we're going through, um, the, the recent uh, threat to the Wasissa River from a water bottling plant, and a number of the other threats that we're dealing with now, coal fire power plants, uh, and then some development proposals as well, all of those in one way, shape, or form are either affecting the forest resources or affecting water resources or the wildlife resources uh, in the region. And while those obviously benefit the folks who live in the region, they also provide benefits to the broader public at large. And I think whenever we're trying to, when we're working to protect those resources, we're doing it both for the benefit of the Red Hills region, but also for those surrounding urban, as, urban areas as well, both in Tallahassee and Thomasville uh, and the larger region as well. Science uh, is, is critical. Uh, unfortunately, that always doesn't really carry the day. Uh, there's a lot of politics that gets involved uh, as well. A lot of times these things come down to, uh, to money as well. And uh, sometimes the, you know, the, the moneyed interests have a big advantage in these things from a development perspective. Uh, on the other hand, I think if you can get out and educate the public about the importance of some of these resources, you can kind of overcome that. And I think we've seen that in terms of some of the, uh, the battles that we've we fought on things like pipelines, on uh, subdivision development in the Red Hills on uh, the Nestle issue with with Sister River. Uh, so there are, I think, a number of examples where, um, you know, I think educating the public and really kind of getting the public out and, and informed about the importance of the resource and what's at stake. And that's been able, I think, to, able to, to help us overcome some of the, the, the major threats to the region. Well, this is uh, Sunny Hill Road. Sunny Hill is one of seven canopy roads uh, here in Leon County. Uh, we've worked to protect these roads as well as four canopy roads in uh, Thomas County, Georgia. Uh, and what we're trying to do here is just to protect sort of these roads that are really emblematic of the rural nature of the Red Hills region. We've got about 300 total miles of these kinds of canopy roads here and they're really, really unique and they do a good job of sort of showing the rural character of this region. Uh, if we weren't here and if these landowners didn't have the ethic that they had, this area would, would look very much like any place else uh, in the country. It would really lose the unique uh, sense of place that it has right now. And it's one of the few places in the country that has really retained its distinctive nature and its dis distinctive sense of place. And I don't think you would see that uh, if, if, we, if we weren't doing the work that we're doing.